you know, like even uh, with this piece. Um, uh -huh. So yes, these are flames. I'm a fancy shawl dancer, and uh, it is like the most probably like high intensity style dance. And um, as a 16 year old, when I was making my leggings, I wanted to look like I was on fire. And so um, <laughs> <laughs> these are part of my personality. Also has a water bird, which was uh, actually gifted to me to use by a Lakota friend at the time. And so um, there's a lot of meaning behind what is in the regalia, you know, where I'd really try to make where anybody can, I can design a piece for anyone um, that is Cheyenne Simone, so that mm -hmm. it's not a traditional regalia piece, it's more of a modern contemporary piece. But okay. yes, those earrings that I made for Victoria are big, uh, which <laughs> I'm excited about. And okay. um, she... <laughs> Yes, she, uh, a lot of the, what's featured in there are precious gemstone beads, and then some of them are tiny little diamonds, and so when she mm -hmm. asked me to commission those, uh, I was like, oh gosh, like I have these <laughs> little diamonds <laughs> in my house, but it, it was a lot of fun to work on that project. Yeah, she's got um, an agate center and diamonds, sapphires, tourmaline. And mm -hmm. two different kinds of opal. Yeah. Okay. So this is kind of the size of something you would wear for your regalia, but it doesn't have any of that traditional symbolism. Is that right? No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I usually, oh, yeah, I do have them here. I did bring them out. These are, so these are the earrings that I made for these hair ties. It's actually, uh, so then, you know, if I put these in, they're pretty big. But not everyone wears, uh, you know, big earrings necessarily for their regalia. But, you know, the bigger and flashier, the the better. <laughs> That's definitely Victoria's uh, point of view, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So another style that you make is called the Two-Spirit earrings. And I have a pair here. Um, so these are with mm -hmm. moonstone centers and then 24 karat gold pleated beads, as well as the colored glass beads. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us, um, can you tell us about this idea of Two-Spirit and what, what that means in your community? Yeah, so, uh... The original Two Spirit Pride earrings were a collaboration with me and uh, Becca Lynn, who is an indigenous beater who um, lives in Ipsy. Actually, next week she's moving back up to Petoskey, but uh, she beats with Cheyenne Simone. And so she has her own jewelry company um, where she specifically designs pieces that are for the LGBTQ and Two Spirit indigenous community. Uh, she bees them, so similar for Cheyenne Simone, anyone can wear them. Um, they're not mm -hmm. traditional pieces, and so uh, I really wanted to work together on a collaborative earring for Pride Month last year, and so we made it, and in the earring, actually, you were just holding up, so it has the colors from the um, Pride flag, so just the general Pride flag, and then the different 24 karat gold bead plated beads we have a couple in there that are different colors and so mm -hmm. we chose the different shades to represent the indigenous brown and black voices that are too often left out of the conversation you know when it comes to the lgbtq community and so um, we did this as a, a semblance of a pride which happens mm -hmm. also to be you know pride month but we did it for pride and being two-spirit um lgbtq uh, but also to acknowledge the indigenous and brown voices. So that was a lot of fun. It actually was probably one of the most challenging pieces I've ever made. We were trying to merge our two different aesthetics and I'm really happy. I think it's one of the best uh, earrings that we, that Cheyenne Simone has to offer. It turned out beautiful. Yeah, they are beautiful. I think they're one of your more popular styles too. Yeah, they are super popular, which I'm excited to see, you know, because they have a, a pretty bold message behind them. Yeah, um, so you mentioned something about anyone can wear these pieces, these Cheyenne, Cheyenne Simone pieces. So what would you say to someone who's 
non-Indigenous, you know, non-Indigenous customer who really likes your work, but who's kind of concerned about wearing it because they don't want to offend your community or offend the Indigenous community in general? Yeah, so the first thing I would say is it's a good thing. I think that someone, if they felt that way, to be thoughtful, you know, before you do something. Um, but that it, these designs are very contemporary and modern and really meant to be worn by anyone. And so uh, starting Cheyenne Simone, a big vision that I had and I still have is that through Cheyenne Simone, I can really uh, bring indigenous contemporary beadwork to the mainstream jewelry market. Um, there are probably hundreds or thousands of women and men and non-binary folks who bead throughout uh, the U.S. and Canada and beyond, but especially the indigenous communities in the U.S. and uh, Canada. And so um, I really want to see where it can be more common for people, anyone, to be able to wear it and to wear a piece um, that is designed by an indigenous person. For me, I, it would make me super happy to see that happen. And that's a, a big goal that I have with Cheyenne Simone to someday see that happen in the market. Yeah. <laughs> And now um, one of your other goals as a business owner and for your day job too um, is, is making sure you're working and doing what you can to protect the environment. So what are some of the mm -hmm. things that Cheyenne Simone does to, um, to use sustainable material? Yeah, great question. So uh, for all those watching, uh, I am a scientist by day and an artist by night trying to work on that, being both all the time. Uh, but I am an energy environmentalist, environmental scientist. Um, and what I do every day is I consult communities, primarily municipalities, so cities, villages, townships on clean energy management. And so um, when I started Cheyenne Simone, I started it uh, with that grounding of whatever I create, it needs to be responsible and it needs to be sustainable. Um, and so with that, I've worked in a couple of different, um, I would say they're like foundational pillars of the company. So one thing that we do is that I have sustainable packaging. I actually have some of it here. So the packaging that I use is just like a simple cardboard box, but it's made of recycled content uh, you can recycle it. You can actually compost. This is biodegradable um, as well. So I try to use materials that have been recycled, are recyclable, things that you might be able to use more than once. Um, so like our paper in here is the same. And then also have these um, drawstring bags that I use with Cheyenne Simone jewelry. So you can store uh, your jewelry in here. These are made of recycled cotton. Um, but then also, I'm going to say that you store your jewelry in something else. Um, you could use these for anything uh, around the house or to give a gift. So really, um, my goal is to minimize the waste that comes with whatever I produce, you know, the company produces from Cheyenne Simone. Um, and then also the material. So um, I'm switching over trying to use mostly recycle 925 sterling silver post uh -huh. and earbags. Um, and then, I mean, with the whole essence of it being a small uh, business where we handcraft jewelry, um, it's a very much slow fashion. So, you know, not having these mass produced um, high uh, inventory sort of operation going on, but that we take a lot of made to order um, to be thoughtful and considerate about the resources that we're using. So really try to, oh, and then um, the most important one potentially uh, is that I really, so when I make these earrings, I make them to be something that I want to wear. And I'm the type of person who like has one pair of earrings and I'll just wear the same pair for a year and not change them. Um, so I wanted them to be something you could wear every day and to be super comfortable. And so I try to make them as durable as possible with high quality materials. 
But in the case that something ever happens to them, I have a commitment to repair uh, the earrings for life. And so that was a, a big, uh, I guess, must have that I wanted with the company um, so that, uh, you know, the life cycle of it doesn't just end with when a client or customer purchases their earrings, but it, it really, I'm responsible for creating this piece that's in the universe now. So, uh, yeah, definitely trying to, in these different uh ways be as sustainable and responsible as possible mm -hmm. yeah I, li I like that phrase that you use it's, it's slow made it's slow jewelry it's not mm -hmm. it's not like fast food jewelry <laughs> it's slow <laughs> <laughs> it has a lot yep. of love and personal touch to it exactly yeah there was a post i recently shared and then abra shared it too about how when you buy a piece of jewelry or art, I think it was more about art, but especially with Cheyenne Simone, when you buy these pieces, there's hours of labor and time and sweat and tears that go into all of it. And so, um, I, I, yeah, the slow fashion, I think, is important. I, I do try to balance, though, that um, when someone orders from Cheyenne Simone, sticking to a pretty good time frame you know, for folks. So there is this like trying to be as good of a well, uh, well old machine. God, my accent comes out so strong when I try to say oil. Um, so that, you know, we're getting things out when they need to go, but also taking the time that we need to get them done. How long does it take you to make a pair of earrings? Yeah, so the little pairs, like the um, freshwater pearl studs that you and I have on, they probably take around two hours, give or take, um, on those. They're actually more difficult to make than some of the other ones, and it's just because the freshwater pearls are all unique. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I can see a pair, match them up, beat them, and then once they're done, I'm like, oh, crap, they're too different of a shape or they're actually two different colors and so they take a lot of concentration to um, match them up just right but then uh, my bigger pieces like I have the Adeline earrings right here these can take around three hours but then the centerpiece is a glass bead which comes in a standard size so um, they're a bigger piece but you know I can beat two of them and they're gonna match up they're you're trying to work with natural gemstones. Um, and then I have, I don't think I have any on hand, but I have the oval direction earrings and those can take up to eight hours to finish. Um, it also, yeah, it also depends on the um, design. So, um, you know, something like the Adeline earrings, I try to be intentional because I'm trying to make, you know, these are to replicate and so I try to be strategic about mm -hmm. making a design that's a little bit easier to do, but is still very elegant, um, where some of them that have a pattern to them can also take a little bit more time. Mm -hmm. And then I forget how long it took me. I, I did these for my regalia. Um, so last minute, I was edging the last pair on the airplane from Detroit oh. to Raleigh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I did them really fast, but yeah, these took me a couple of days to get done. I just, I remember I kept beating it and I would take a, put it on, take a picture and send to my best friend and be like, are these big enough? And then I just kept making them bigger and bigger. <laughs> so they're probably a little bit too big, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, so are you ready to show us some beading? Yes. Um, so. Is the lighting okay? I know the, these windows open. Um, but this is my workstation. Set up. Okay, so I'll show you right quick just what this switched over. Okay, so here's my desk, um, and I have. I don't know if you can see. Here we go. Um, most things I store in here, um, but this is where I get everything done. And so um, 
all these drawers are like full of beads and packaging materials and everything. Um, but I use these pads. So these pads are nice because the beads, uh, if you drop something, it just sticks to it. It doesn't roll. Um, and then I usually have this right here in a drawer, but I, I pulled it out. So it's kind of nice um, because all these different tubes of beads I can just store in here. And then you have like a whole bunch of them. And then I have so a, a messy the, drawer. Sorry, what are oh, the what? colored beads made of? Yeah, so these are glass beads. A uh, majority of the beads that I use are Japanese. Mayuki is the brand. Um, and I like using those because they're very symmetrical. Um, most of them, the beads are similar in size. Uh, but then most of the center pieces that I use, the if I have a glass bead in the center of the earring, happens to be a check bead. But yeah, they're all glass. And uh, it actually is a pretty intensive process um, to make such a tiny product. Um, if anyone is interested, I definitely recommend just like Google how to make glass beads. And it's like people are taking these giant rods of glass and putting them in these really hot furnaces and like um, working on them. And, and there's just, it seems like an infinite amount of steps to go through uh, to get this final product. So I actually didn't know um, as much about glass beads until I started the company. So now I, I have like a whole new um, this fascination with them to know that there's such an intense process behind making them. Mm -hmm. super okay, appreciation so. for them. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. Mm -hmm. It's actually something, uh, I'm trying to get this to go, okay. Something I, I really want, another step in the, um, being as responsible and sustainable as possible is I know it has to be energy intensive to make glass beads. And so I'm really interested in learning more. So I'm an energy nerd. So I, I want to know more <laughs> about the actual energy intensity, the footprint. It'd be, it'd be interesting to learn more. And then what can I do, you know, to yeah. have a smaller footprint. So what I have here are couple of different things. Um, oh, the most important thing here is actually my light. Well, you can see I just got this bad boy last week, <laughs> which I'm super <laughs> excited about. Um, I will shamelessly say I was using an old light that was left at our house uh, from the previous owner, and so I <laughs> upgraded to a nice LED light. Uh, which is nice and it has like the magnifying glass in the top of it and you can change the tone. So when you're making a piece, I have something to show you here. So this is actually a piece that I'm gifting to my dad. So it's the seal for our tribe. Um, it's you, and so that closer to the camera. Oh, does it yes. have, oh, it has trees on it. Is that right? Yep. So, yep. So it's our tribal seal. It has um, clouds. This is rain. Um, and then this is tobacco and corn. And then um, there's a black snake at the bottom. So each one of these have a different meaning behind them. Um, and then you have two different dates. Oh, gosh, make sure I know exactly what they mean. I know 65 is when we were officially recognized um, as a tribe. Um, I think 53 is related to our tribal school, but I might be wrong about that. Um, so yeah, this is our seal. And so I brought this up to show you, like, this is a big piece that um, I'm making this different versus this, which is how the, turn this light off. So this is how the freshwater pearl studs start off. Um, I'll pick out a pearl, which So I have different strands of pearls mm -hmm. that I buy from a couple of different vendors. I know that most pearls originate um, from China in different, mm -hmm. uh, actually different, like small farmers will 
produce the pearls um, in addition to their rice patties and different things. So just kind of cool. Um, or it's interesting. So yeah. I'll pick a pearl and then I'll attach it to here. I'll secure it. And then, um, yes, I just saw Catherine said, these are <laughs> urban ashes. So these trays, these valley trays, um, these specifically are made from, I think, lapboard from a house that was deconstructed in Detroit. And so mm -hmm. it's reused wood. And then I um, have a couple of other ones that are made from trees um, that I think were probably municipal trees in a city. And then they uh, repurposed them. So that's another part of, you know, trying to be a sustainable that's possible. So when beading, you probably can't even see it, but you have this tiny little needle needle um, that I use. So I have a needle here and you have thread and then you have, have Is it like a sewing needle or is it different? Kind of. It's really, really tiny. I don't even know if you can you can see it. it is like a really small sewing oh. needle. Um, yeah, I can. And yeah, you can't even. You can yeah, see it's it okay. a little reflection of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can kind of see it sparkling. Um, but then you take this thread, which I'm using a uh, size B Nemo thread here. Um, is that the same kind of thread you'd use for like a pearl strand? I don't know. That's a good question. I know this is what I've always used um, with beading because um, it's pretty sturdy. Um, and <laughs> then, so um, I think it's made of nylon. Oh, okay. Are you sure? Yep, the nylon, bonded nylon. Um, so it's like, it's strong enough to hold, but yet yeah, you can also cut it uh, fairly easy. So you'll you'll knot the thread, you'll thread the needle, um, which I do way too much beading now because I can probably do it with my eyes closed, which is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so then I'll have the beads and I'll put them in a jar or on the pad and then you just, um, so what I've already done is I've already, there's holes in these pearls, so you attach it to the beading foundation. Um, mm -hmm. And then I'll put the beads onto the piece. And then if you can see. Um, oh, yes, I can I'll see. Start. Are they little dark beads around a pink pearl? Mm -hmm. Yep, so you'll put them around, and um, I usually try to, figure out however many I need to finish that row. Um, and then once I do that, so this is the whole two needle technique. You'll, you'll hold down the, you'll have it like this, and then I'll just start tacking down. So it's like I'm tacking down the string and you're going in between every single bead. Pack it down. And then you have, so you have to, you know, I don't even know if you can really see it, but you come up um, and then you keep tacking it. So you, you'll do that and try to preserve the shape of whatever it is that you want. Um, you have to be careful. So beads. Uh, beading is about achieving the perfect amount of tension. <laughs> it's not too much, uh, but then it's not too loose. And so um, that's why you really have to be mindful with it um, to make sure you don't. I actually, I like to listen to a podcast or something uh, when I'm doing it, but I'll do that. So I'll tack down every single bead. And then when I do the next row, I'll tack down every single bead um, and then edge them. And then I do... You can probably see it better here on the Adeline. I do a single edge bead, um, which is probably not the most common. Um, like the way Victoria's are actually made is more common um, to do a couple of beads. But I really like 
when I'm uh, designing Cheyenne and someone earrings, I wanted it to, I wanted it to look like a very cohesive final piece and to be as minimalistic with it as possible. And so single bead edging is probably difficult, uh, which I learned once I got into this, but I really think it's, it's needed and worthwhile and it is what creates um, the very elegant and sleek look to the earrings. So yeah, that's how, and then uh, with this piece, there's, so it's very different, you know, where I'm following the shape of that freshwater pearl. With this, mm -hmm. it's all freehanded. So I am following the pattern of the tribal seal, but you have to be very mindful again of like that tension. Beads come in different sizes and shapes. So you have to be, um, sometimes you have to go through and pick out the right size that you need. But once you get it right, it's the best feeling in the world. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Do you use the magnification a lot or? I do. Um, <laughs> actually, the old light started to die. Um, and for probably a week, I was beating without the light. And I was definitely getting major headaches, making a lot of mistakes. Like, you, it's amazing the light and then having one of these. Um, like, I can bead for hours and not get a headache. Um, and then having the magnification, you can really zoom in. So then when I'm finishing off a piece, I use this little thread zapper. I use this thread zapper. And then I actually use this to burn the edges so you don't have any raw edges. But you can't really see it that well with the naked eye. So having this helps. And um, I'll go through and, like, get rid of, get, uh, rid of any extra thread that's sticking up that you might not see too well. So I really love the magnifying uh, capability <laughs> of these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so can anyone uh, learn to do this or is this more something for, in, you know, indigenous people who have passed it down as their tradition? That's a good question. So um, I would say just about probably I'll say most cultures throughout the world have some sort of beading that mm -hmm. is traditional to the indigenous peoples. You know, we're all indigenous to somewhere. And so um, there are many places like you'll see specific, um, like different African countries have, uh, I mean, there's thousands, hundreds, probably tens of thousands of different tribes that have their own um, styles and beading techniques, but then it's also really popular in um, Eastern Europe and in Russia. Uh, so there's, and probably I know some in India, and so it's pretty common throughout. Um, but then you know each each culture has their own take on it, and so um, there's a whole underground and above ground world of beading. Um, you can like get magazines, you can take beading classes. Um, I would say probably though, like when it comes to native beadwork, which um, can be, you know, particular to your tribe, or you could just, you know, be putting together some colors you like, um, but in like an indigenous way. So um, what I to me, sometimes what makes something a little bit different and more, um, I guess, something that's like pan native or a lot of different natives um, do is that you'll see a lot of colors interwoven. So um, a lot of native regalia and just contemporary pieces have this beautiful way of taking this like explosion of colors and bringing them together and then balancing them with black and white. And so uh, to me, that's always something that catches my eye that you'll see with a lot of Native uh, beadwork. And so um, it really is dependent upon the tribe and the people, you know, on if a certain pattern is traditional to them or a technique. But in general, a lot of people, you know, of all sorts of backgrounds do some beading. <laughs> that was a long answer. <laughs> So what else are you working on? Yes, so actually I've been working on, I have not even actually put these on our website or um, have them in any other stores yet, but these are tiny, 
Oh, is the lighting bad? Can you see this okay? Um, it's a little bit dark. A little dark. Um, actually, let me close this right quick. Is that better? A little, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. That doesn't help. All right. Um, so these uh, little ones are actually even smaller. They're smaller pearls than the freshwater pearls. Oh, they're pretty small. So I was trying to make, like, test myself and make something even smaller than the smallest ones I have. So I came up with these little guys, and I love this color. It's like a pinkish purple. I forget what the actual name of the um, color of the bead is that I bought, but I really love that color. And so that's one I, I want to release this fall. I think it's pretty fall colors, but uh, it's also small. So I didn't say it earlier, but a lot of the pieces I've made um, was because so I'm a scientist and I work in a professional space. And um, I always, always want to wear my beaded earrings, but most of my earrings are you know, pretty big, um, you know, these are with my regalia, which I can wear them um, anywhere, but it it wasn't, you know, always something I wanted. I didn't want to always have something so big on at yeah. work, um, and so I was looking for small beaded earrings that were still, you know, bold and beautiful, but just not so big, and so I just decided to make it myself um and start you know making these earrings and i just happened to i went to a local bead store and i grabbed a couple of different colors of beads and i just happened to run across these freshwater pearls and then i remember <laughs> over that christmas uh break i had a week off in the nonprofit i work at and i just sat in this room and said okay i can only use the colors i have in front of me <laughs> and the materials and that's how most of the earrings I have now started. Um, it was forcing myself to just take what I had and make the best of it. And so um, I really try to make small pieces that you can wear anywhere. So I did it initially um, wanting something for work. But I like to think Cheyenne Simone earrings are for the everyday woman. So like you could wear them to the grocery store you can wear them around the house and no one is even there. You can wear them <laughs> to a board, to a board meeting, like, you know, whatever, wherever you're at, uh, you can wear your Cheyenne Simone earrings and, and know that you have a beautiful piece of jewelry on. Uh, when I started the company, a, a vision statement we had was that Cheyenne Simone is about incredible women wearing beautiful jewelry. And so uh, in that, you know, all women are incredible and I'm about empowering all women. And so um, I really like to think that any any person really uh, can wear Cheyenne Simone earrings. Yeah, they are beautiful and they're perfect to wear everywhere. I agree. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> it always makes me feel good. A lot of people I talk to who have a pair um, and who shop with us tell me that they're so comfortable and they wear them all, all the time. And I go, please send me a picture. Just send me <laughs> a selfie so I can share your beautiful face. But it it really makes me feel good every time someone says that because that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make comfortable beaded earrings that you know you can wear anywhere, anytime, and anyone can wear them. Yeah. Uh, how should we take care of our Cheyenne Simone earrings? Yes, good question. So if you have, uh, which a lot of the, so some of the post bags um, are surgical steel, which mm -hmm. initially I chose um, because I thought, okay, what is probably something that is good? Uh, you have a sensitivity mm -hmm. to a metal. What's something I can use that most people will be okay with? And so I started off with that. Um, and now I've transitioned to using uh, recycled 925 sterling silver. So um, with the, well, I still offer surgical steel, but with these, you can just really, you know, wipe off the post. 
um, yeah. probably with some soap and water. The backs of these are um, made, or they're backed with ultra suede, which is washable. So if you do, like, and let's say you take some soap and water and you clean your earring post, it's okay as the back of it gets wet and the beading foundation is washable. So uh, you really are not going to mess up the earrings. Um, I do ask that you try not to get them wet because they are fabric, but I chose fabric that should be able to handle if someone is sweating in them. Um, I've actually, it's very crazy, but I have ran a 5K in my Cheyenne Simone earring. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a 5K for my my tribe put on, and so I was so excited. I was like, I'm wearing my beaded earrings. You can wear them anywhere. Yeah. Um, and it, it was fine, and they don't smell. Um, but yeah, you can do that, and then you can wipe them off. But something I would say is that if you have... Something I would say is that if you have any of the beads that are plated um, mm -hmm. with the gold or anything, be careful because it is a plating. And so, yeah. um, you know, be very careful if you use any sort of a, um, polishing cloth. And then um, I would say with the, if you have the other post, the um, sterling silver, this is, I just cut off a piece of um, polishing cloth, which already mm -hmm. has like the, I don't even know what chemical it is, but it's already chemically treated um, yeah. to take off tarnish. So you can use that to take off some tarnish. Um, and then something something I, I read, um, I probably need to do more research into it, but is that with freshwater pearls, um, it's like they get better with age and then with wearing them and even some of the oils from your own skin, um, it's not bad for them. It's kind of like natural polish. Yeah. And so uh, I really like that. Uh, as far as these pearls. But yep, the, the main thing is just wiping them down um, and keeping your post and earring bags uh, clean. And then I use these um, large earring bags. So uh, before Cheyenne Simone, I swear I lost like every, I would at least lose one earring um, with any <laughs> pair that I had. And so, um, again, I tried to make something that I knew I would wear. So when I found out about these lovely little earring bags or big earring bags, I use these for everything. Now, I think they make the earrings more comfortable, especially if you have mm -hmm. a big pair of Cheyenne Simone earrings on. Um, but you're also less likely to lose your earring when mm -hmm. you have these. Yeah, I'm a big fan yeah. of the bag that you use, they're, they're really strong mm -hmm. and they help balance the weight of the beads. Yep, yep, Which exactly. And then um, as far as care, probably something to really be careful about is that uh, this is made with needle and thread. So mm -hmm. be careful to not cut the edges um, on them or, or anything like that because it will uh, mess up the integrity or mess with the integrity. So we should probably take them off before we go swimming. <laughs> well, um, you broke up. I missed that last sorry, part. Not sure I... <laughs> sorry, we should probably take them off before we jump in the shower or go swimming, right? Yes, uh, you should. You should definitely <laughs> take them off. Um, also, before you go to sleep, they're not comfortable <laughs> to sleep in. They're comfortable yeah. hopefully in any other. <laughs> Uh, thing you're doing but yeah if you're try not to get them to get them wet again though I mean all of the the ultra suede the beading foundation it's all washable so um, you really just you know anytime you have more than one piece of fabric together you don't want to give anything a chance to grow in there so trying to keep them as dry as possible is good uh, but if they do get wet they they should be okay and you can, if your ultra suede on the back gets, um, I say it gets dirty for any reason, you can wash it with soap and water. I would just um, do like a spot clean, but you can't clean it. Very durable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so do you have any other items to show us or should I show some of the things that we have at Abra? Um, yeah, I don't really have... Anything else? Um, 
other, well, this is just a, so sometimes I get into this mood of like, okay, I just have this vision in my head and I need to put it, I need to beat it and just make it. Mm -hmm. And so (laughs) I have seen a lot of tulips and things. And so I just like started beating and I made this little piece, which I mean, actually it's good you can see the back I haven't even etched it or backed it or anything um and so after I made it I thought huh what do I want to use with this so I recently started making lapel pins and uh yeah going into a direction where Cheyenne Simone is um you know not I think anyone can wear the earrings but I really um target women and uh, women empowerment through the earrings, but I'm I am going to start making lapel pins um, and jewelry that women, men, non-binary, like you can wear these pieces. So like something like this, I might actually turn into a lapel pin. I don't have one here with me, but I thought you know this is I could at least talk about it through this piece. Yeah. You you yeah, make so the two spirit design as a pin now too, right? Yep, that was the first one. So we thought that'd be kind of cool, you know, if someone, especially, um, I don't know, if you're at like, if you just want to have it, you know, to put um, on your badge at work, or if you're at a march, or if you just want to put it on like, um, I know Susan Bowman actually bought one and she put it on her hat, which is super uh, beautiful that she did and so uh, we made it where like you, it's not just a pair of earrings you can really wear it as a statement uh, for pride month or anytime yeah if you're not an earring person but you still want to have that symbol of them. yep yep exactly I, I would eventually I'll probably venture into making you know necklaces and mm-hmm. more pins I've even thought about cufflinks um, or even like oh. making specific, I've, um, I'm actually working on a pair of wedding earrings right now. And so I'm thinking about all these different, I, I think my ideas are uh, more grand than the actual capacity and time I have to do <laughs> <laughs> most of it. Uh, but eventually, <laughs> yep. <laughs> so right now I'm sticking to earrings, um, getting good at that before I move on. But eventually I, I'll open it up. And then if anyone ever has something in mind for a commission. Um, I mean, even looking at this, I can do something as simple as a fresh water pearl, or, um, I mean, it will not be a tribal seal. This is a gift, but I can also do something as complex as like a freehanded design. So um, I'm really open and to any ideas and any challenge someone can throw my way. All right, challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> Um, So let me show some of the other beautiful designs from Cheyenne Simone that we have here at Gabra right now. So in addition to the freshwater design that I'm wearing today, we have um, this design with these pink freshwater pearls and um, kind of an an earthy color palette with browns and mauves and a little bit of yellows and golds. I think your freshwater pearl line is my favorite. Or I thought it was until I saw your moonstone <laughs> earrings. Oh yeah, those are my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I love these. These are beautiful. So this is sterling Thank silver you. moonstone center, and then palladium plated beads. Mhm. Um, another pair that I really like that has a semi precious stone in the center. This pair with garnet in the center garnet and then Mm -hmm. 24 karat plated beads Um, a really beautiful autumnal color palette for these Um, and we have some of your dangles i know you ventured into the dangles not too long ago i have i um a lot of people kept like saying can't you just make the same design and a dangle Uh, (laughs) but i really actually i um mariah was a great person to work with, Mariah with Abra, to help me figure out how to make them so that they were as durable as the studs. And so, um, let me see if I can show you. I actually, what I ended up doing was I bought a disc cutter, and um, I was so excited to get this little disc cutter. <laughs> but I take it, and then you, you know, you put a piece of metal, whatever it is, in there, and you stamp it. So um, all of those hooks 
um, or through, this is like a little piece of aluminum that I've used, but you stamp it out and all of those are um, put together through this. So like your ear has to fall off for the dangle or the piece to fall out of it. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, but they sustainable. <laughs> Yep, exactly. All of the above is what I try to do. Um, and those are very, surprisingly, they're very lightweight. I feel like you put them on mm -hmm. and kind of, I have put them on and forgot they were there. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Brittany, for joining us today. And congratulations mm -hmm. on Cheyenne Simone's two-year anniversary. Thank um, you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're so proud to carry your work here at Abracadabra. And if anyone in the audience saw an item that they liked or want to know more about Cheyenne Simone, you can reach out to us at the store via Instagram, Facebook, email. You can call us if you like. Um, and this video, if you missed any part of it, this video will be on our Instagram as well as on the Instagram for Cheyenne Simone. And it will be on our YouTube channel as well. We're about to get cut off, Brittany. <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid we have to say goodbye. But thank you so much for joining us and 